been significant debate and confusion over so-called self-defence sprays or criminal identifier sprays. And with one or two major brands in the UK and the increase in violent crime, many people do rightly wonder whether they are allowed to carry these, buy these and, of course, use them on would-be attackers. Now, the legal position is not absolutely 100% crystal clear. So, for the avoidance of doubt, in my view, based on the legislation and police guidance and various other things, my view is that there is no definitively legal criminal identifier spray or self-defence spray. Now, that bears the need for a little qualification. What I mean by there is no definitively legal spray of this kind is that there is no specific legislation or guidance or statutory instrument or case law definitively stating that this is legal. What there is, however, is the standard firearms legislation, which does cover things much more readily identifiable under the legislation, such as pepper spray, because they do discharge what's referred to as a noxious liquid within the legislation. Section 51B of the Firearms Act of 1968 provides that a firearm can include any weapon of whatever description designed or adapted for the discharge of any noxious liquid gas or other thing. Now, granted these uh, criminal identifier sprays and self-defense sprays are designed to meet all of these UK law requirements in that they are said not to discharge any noxious liquid and that whatever it is inside them is non-toxic, not harmful, not designed to be harmful and these are all the claims made by the manufacturers which might well be true. The fact of the matter is there hasn't been a case that has come to court, not least with the research that I've done and some very senior barristers I've spoken to, that has definitively decided whether or not one of these sprays is, quote, legal per the legislation. Now, for obvious reasons, any criminal that's been sprayed by one of these things is not really likely to come forward to the police to say they sprayed me with this thing because I was attacking them, therefore please prosecute them for it. Quite obviously, that's not going to happen. So, dare I say it, a number of people might have been red-faced by the sprays. And I might well tell you, of my personal opinion, that I'd be with the victim that sprayed said attacker with the red stuff, or whatever colour it might be. But the point of the matter is, we would need a test case to come to court to definitively rule out any possibility that somebody using one of these could be prosecuted themselves for possession and use of any kind of firearm or weapon. Because the risk remains that if a would-be attacker got seriously injured or their clothing got seriously damaged, heaven forfend, then you might be, if you're the one spraying it, accused of assault or criminal damage. Now, there was a petition that went to government to request that the law be changed so that pepper spray is made legal as a self-defence weapon. The government's response, very in very broad terms, was that that's not going to happen because they would see it as an escalation of violence. Therefore, they are not about to permit people to carry around something designed as a weapon, designed to cause some level of harm, albeit non-lethal. But as for a self-defence spray in the form of a dye or criminal identifier and things like that, it remains, as I say, to be tested in court. Now, many people have asked me for my opinion as to whether these things are legal. Now, of course, I cannot give you my legal opinion over a YouTube video, not least of which because I don't have any one particular product to hand for which I've got a test result from an expert to tell me whether or not this thing is of in any way noxious or dangerous upon which to base my legal opinion, which I might otherwise do so if I were formally instructed to do so. However, what I can say in the broadest of guidance not to be relied upon as legal advice and for which I will accept no responsibility for anybody relying on said guidance that I'm about to give you is that in my view, in the very broad spectrum of things, if you were to purchase something from a long-standing, reputable brand, which on the face of it has done a lot of research and a, taken a lot of effort by the looks of it to make sure that these comply with the legislation, but their sole purpose 
is to make it safer for would-be victims to identify an attacker. And if all of those things are proven out, then I will probably be of the view that these things will be held to be a legal thing if it comes to court. Not that I think it's likely to come to court, but if it does come to court, i.e. you are accused of attacking somebody with a so-called weapon, even though it's not designed as a weapon, you're not using it as a weapon, you get what I mean, but if you were accused of using it as a weapon, in my view, if the manufacturer is reputable with a long-standing history and they've gone to great lengths to show that these things are not noxious liquids, they're not dangerous, they're not going to harm anybody, there's no permanent injury likely and all of these kind of things, I don't think the court is going to uphold a charge against you that this is a weapon, much less a firearm, under Section 5 of the Firearms Act. Now, as I said, that cannot be definitive legal advice. Even if one of you guys were to ring me up and say that you'll pay me to give you that as legal advice, I wouldn't be able to do so without getting the thing tested by an expert. I would certainly hope that the main manufacturers of these things within the UK have gone to great lengths with their experts to test exactly that, to ensure that they are safe. And some of the videos that I've seen seem to suggest that they are safe things. But it just comes with that little bit of a warning that eventually it might well get tested in court. However unlikely I think that might be, there's the possibility. But as many people have said in the comments, you may feel safer with the risk of being accused of using this as a weapon for self-defense than you would being attacked in the first place. And just for the avoidance of doubt, many, many other things such as the pepper spray variety or any kind of knife or any kind of stick or any kind of other thing that is designed to cause harm is going to be a weapon if you're carrying it for the purposes of self-defense because anything that is designed or adapted or carried with the intent of causing harm is going to be a weapon. So this just goes to show that some areas of law remain unclear in the definitive sense of the word. Although if I were pressed for my opinion, not that it's legal advice, but if I were pressed for my opinion, I think the court would ultimately decide these are perfectly fine. But until the court case comes, we won't know. So leave me your thoughts and comments in the box below. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.